A wall of silence hides a secret buried deep beneath the soil of one of the world's oldest civilizations, a civilization of gold, gods, and forgotten bloodlines. For centuries, textbooks have told a simple story of India's past, of mighty empires, spiritual awakenings, and cultural grandeur. But what if that story is incomplete? What if beneath the temples and texts lies something far more ancient and far more controversial? In a remote excavation site, scientists stumbled upon human remains untouched for thousands of years. Not kings, not warriors, just ordinary people from a forgotten village. But when their DNA was sequenced, the results shook the very foundation of India's historical identity. It told a tale the official narratives dare not speak, a genetic footprint that leads not just beyond borders, but beyond accepted belief. Why is this genetic truth being ignored? Who are the people that modern India refuses to acknowledge, even though their blood still flows through its veins? India, a subcontinent of over 1.4 billion people, is often seen as a cultural monolith, an unbroken line from the ancient Vedas to modern technology. But peel back the layers of myth and monarchy, and a far more fragmented origin emerges. For decades, historians debated whether the people of India were indigenous to the land, or if they came from somewhere else entirely. The stakes? National identity, political power, and historical pride. The Indus Valley Civilization flourishing around 3300 BCE, was long believed to be the root of Indian civilization. Its vast cities, like Mohenjo-daro and Harappa, rivaled those of Mesopotamia. Yet no one knew where these people came from, or where they went. For years, archaeologists unearthed ruins and pottery, but not the one thing that could settle the debate. Intact ancient DNA. Until recently, a single discovery from the dusty plains of Rakigari would ignite a firestorm. The mystery wasn't just academic. It threatened to rewrite the origin story of a nation. And not everyone was ready for the truth. In 2018, under the scorching sun of Haryana, India, a team of archaeologists made an unassuming yet groundbreaking find. Deep in the ancient ruins of Rakigari, once a bustling city of the Indus Valley, they uncovered a burial site untouched by time. Among the skeletal remains was the fragile skeleton of a woman, buried in solitude. No royal jewels, no grand tomb, just a simple grave, over 4,500 years old. But it was exactly what scientists had been waiting for. Unlike other remains exposed to humidity and decay, her bones were preserved well enough to extract viable DNA. For the first time, a complete genome from the Indus Valley civilization could be decoded. This wasn't just an archaeological discovery. It was a genetic time capsule. As researchers prepared the samples, questions loomed. Would her DNA match that of modern Indians? Or would it trace a forgotten migration? A people wiped from memory? The moment her genome was unlocked, a controversial door creaked open. The sample was sent to a high-security lab, where a multinational team of geneticists and archaeologists worked in secrecy. Led by experts from India, South Korea, and Harvard University, the Rakagari genome was about to undergo the most detailed ancient DNA analysis ever attempted in South Asia. But almost immediately, resistance emerged. Government agencies delayed approvals. Nationalist voices in the media condemned the research before it even began. There was fear, palpable and political, that the results could contradict long-held beliefs about India's indigenous heritage. But the scientists pressed on, determined to let the data speak. The genome was painstakingly reconstructed, fragment by fragment. Advanced techniques removed contaminants and isolated markers tied to ancestry and migration. Then came the comparisons, 
with modern Indian populations, with Central Asians, with ancient steppe nomads, and the results began to whisper. Of origins far from the Ganges, a silent war had begun. Science versus nationalism. Truth versus narrative. But no one was prepared for what the genome would ultimately reveal. The results were undeniable. The woman from Rakigari carried no trace of the genetic markers associated with the steppe pastoralists, nomadic tribes from Central Asia, widely believed to have migrated into India around 1500 BCE. These steppe groups, often linked to the spread of Indo-European languages and the Vedic culture, were thought to have profoundly shaped the Indian subcontinent. But this ancient woman told a different story. Her DNA revealed ancestry tied closely to ancient Iranian agriculturalists and Southeast Asian hunter-gatherers, but not to the Aryan steppe lineage celebrated in many nationalist versions of Indian history. In fact, the entire Indus Valley population may have had no steppe ancestry at all. This means the foundation of Indian civilization likely predates the so-called Aryan migrations. The implications were seismic. If the Indus people were genetically distinct from later migrants, then India's original civilizations were not shaped by outside invaders, but by indigenous innovation, a forgotten bloodline erased by time, and, perhaps, by political convenience. The data didn't just rewrite textbooks. It challenged identity itself. Picture the bustling streets of Rakigari over 4,500 years ago. Stone-paved roads, intricate drainage systems, markets alive with trade, and artisans shaping tools and pottery with skill passed down through generations. These were not primitive villagers. They were engineers, urban planners, and farmers. They domesticated crops, built granaries, and lived in organized egalitarian communities. No towering temples, no kings, just a complex, thriving society lost beneath layers of dust and denial. But then, something changed. Around 1900 BCE, the great cities of the Indus Valley began to collapse. Climate shifts dried up rivers, trade routes failed, the population scattered. As centuries passed, new groups migrated in, pastoralists from the Central Asian steppes, bringing new languages, rituals, and hierarchies. Over time, the memory of the original builders faded. Their stories were not passed down, their bloodlines diluted, their cities swallowed by silence. And yet, the DNA remained, buried beneath brick and soil, waiting to be heard. The discovery at Rakagari didn't just shed light on who the Indus people were. It forced us to confront who we thought they were. The genome of a forgotten woman has reopened a debate as old as civilization itself. Who are we? Really? The story encoded in ancient DNA does not seek to erase identity but to enrich it, to show that India's origins are not rooted in conquest, but in complexity, in migrations, adaptations, and silent resilience. A civilization built by hands long ignored, a legacy buried, not by time, but by choice. Today, the official narrative still resists this truth. The Rakagari discovery was met with censorship, delay, and denial. But science moves forward, quietly, relentlessly. And now, the genetic map of the subcontinent is being redrawn, pixel by pixel, base, pair by base, pair. What else lies hidden beneath modern myths and political agendas? What other truths remain unspoken beneath our feet? If this story intrigued you, don't forget to like, subscribe, and dive deeper into the hidden layers of human history. Because sometimes, the past doesn't just echo. It demands to be heard.